You've shared some cool stuff about uh, what it means to walk by faith. And, um, and of course, in Habakkuk's case, he's been given this, what seems like an awful word. I'm taking care of the problem that you're so broken about, how people are treated, how evil prevails. He's, he's basically saying, um, okay, Lord, um, I can accept that. Yeah, well, I'll, let me, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and read. Um, just a piece of his, his closing. It's a prayer. It's a psalm. It says uh, it's set to, it should be set to stringed instrument. So, <laughs> you know, um, maybe we should be singing this. I, you know, I don't know, but I'm just going to read, read a portion of it. it. It's just, it's, it's beautiful. Though the fig tree should not blossom nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail and the fields yield no food. The flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places. And this here is just rejoicing anyway, right? Like suffering, suffering is part of of the deal it was a it was about to be part of the deal for uh you know habakkuk's people even for that remnant even for those who had been faithful even for those who had been doing all the things right you know you can you can look at uh the proverbs and you can say man I've do, i'm doing these things and it says that it should equal this it should equal this you know and, and yet then you you also obviously you need to look at job right and and, and other pieces of wisdom literature and just see that um Man, there's just, it's a bigger picture and suffering is part of it. Trouble's a guarantee, mm. right? I mean, uh, John 16, 33, right? Um, in this world, you'll have tribulation. You'll have trouble. But, Je but Jesus says, take, we get to take heart. We get to find strength in him because he's, he's overcome the world. He's, he's overcome the trouble uh, yeah. of the world. And, so that's and while he's evident. telling them this, while he's telling them this, he has not yet uh, he's he's about to be crucified. He is not yet risen from the dead. He is not yet ascended into heaven. So it's the same picture. Yeah. Uh, he's telling he's telling them to take joy, even though even though tribulation's coming. Yeah. How how do we? I, I don't know if you can. How do we get joy when nothing around us is flourishing? Yeah. You know, I think those are the moments where you're. Uh, yeah, that, that's where I feel like where where, the, where our theology and where our the, the the foundational rocks of our what our faith is built on is so important. You know, do we believe in our bones that God is good and that God mm -hmm. is unchanging and that God is is for us? Um, can we count on that when things are hard and when 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 everything is confusing and we don't under and we don't understand it? Uh, you know, when we're, when we're just disenfranchised with life and what we're experiencing, when, when we feel like we're experiencing injustice, when it just doesn't seem right, you know, why is this happening? Why is, bad, why is a bad thing happening to me? Can we remember what, what is the bedrock that our life is on? And when we remember the goodness of God and we, we have those, those moments, you know, those, those flag in the sand moments where you remember what the Lord has done when you you know, the, the times when you experience revelation and, um, and healing and refreshment and the, the moments where you just know that you know that you know, have you stored those up to a place where you can rest in them? Do you, um, have, we, have we fostered, you know, like um, going back to praise and worship in his, in his presence, the, you know, the refreshment it can be found. Uh, it makes me think of uh, recently read a biography with my family on St. Francis yeah. and, uh, uh, and uh, his, his, a couple of his disciples were asking what is pure joy? And, uh, and he, he says, uh, and he, he starts describing really bad things that can happen to you. And he says, but that's not pure joy. And then he describes something else bad. And finally it gets to where he, he describes that they're traveling uh, all night long in the rain. They're soaking wet. 
Uh, they finally get to the inn where their dear brother, uh, their, their close friend, a fellow Franciscan, uh, is to welcome them and take them in uh, and put them by the fire. And he says, uh, but that's not pure joy. Pure joy is when they open the door and they see us and they say, uh, you're not welcome here. And they slam the door in our faces and we're freezing and cold and there's nowhere left to go and, uh, and no, no other places close to go to. And he says, that, my brothers, is pure joy. And I, I read that. I think that's, that sounds more like pure psychosis <laughs> to me. <laughs> you know? But um, I, I, well, I can't help but wonder, huh? As a, you know, the, routinely following God, there's plenty of times where I feel like a crazy person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Um, I, I wonder if for Francis, he is uh, tangibly aware at that moment that God is looking down on him and smiling and singing over him. And, and if he can tangibly feel the peace of God, which is even, a, which is a better experience than getting dried out in front of the fire and having food cooked for you. And yeah. that's why he can say that's pure joy. And, and, um, and I, I, I think it wasn't just that he was odd, although Francis may have been the oddest of the odd. Um, but I think he was tapped into this faith that you're talking about, where uh, he knows it's there, uh, what you were just describing, even though nothing else seems to be saying it's there. He knows the goodness of God, and, and um, somehow for him, poverty was his flag in the sand, saying God actually is really pleased with me right now. I don't think he just imagined it. I think he literally experienced joy, and I guess that's a joy that we don't really learn about until we've, uh, we've had things stripped away from us. Habakkuk, who's gotten this word from God that it's just going to be ugly for a while. And uh, and he's saying, uh, still rejoicing, still rejoicing, even though. When, you're, when your faith is there and when you your trust is fully in God, and, and we, we know when we're really trusting God because we can experience that transcendent peace. Mm -hmm. You know, the circumstance doesn't change. It's still bearing down on us. But there's there's peace, and that's the peace that the world can't offer. That's the peace mm -hmm. that Christ offers. And I, and I, you know, for me, there's just this there's this connection there, you know.